from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is the Thai Cats This Week with RJ Broadhead and Luke Tasker. Biggest game of the season. We can finally say that. It is huge. The Tiger Cats, they need a win. It would make their life a lot easier against the Riders on Friday at 7.30. RJ Broadhead and Luke Tasker, we're here. We're going to call the game on Friday on the Tie Cats Audio Network, and it's time for Tie Cats this week. Luke, you texted me earlier this week, and I thought I was going to get a must win out of you, but it, it, it's it's close. Well, it's close. Admittedly, but you, you take it literally. Admittedly, I, I had to I had to do the math, and I'm not sure. <laughs> it took me like a day to make sure I was getting it all right, and I still am not 100 percent sure. <laughs> but and that's but, Cornell education. I, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing's guaranteed, and I and I uh, you know I can't I can't give it the must win yet. They're, they could make the playoffs while still losing this game, but it 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 is like astronomically hard to do that, you know, and you really need losses from multiple teams. And of course you have to win all three of your last three. So it's, 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 I like to withhold the word still must win, but boy, it's, uh, it's time to go. Yeah. So the scenario, second place looks unlikely. First place is out of the question in the East division, uh, second place with Montreal, the way they're playing, you'd have to think that the Tiger Cats would have to win all of their games and need a little bit of help from Montreal. So the crossover, avoiding it, finishing third in the East Division is the best-case scenario for the Tiger Cats. If they win the game, they're in pretty good shape. They are within two points of the Riders. They have a game in hand with Calgary and two games against Ottawa remaining. If they lose, then Tiger Cats have to win all their games and hope the Riders lose all of theirs and I guess the situation is still in the Tiger Cats hands after 14 games four and ten record the Tiger Cats can still control their own destiny I, I just I, I can't get over that with four games remaining I, I'm I'm amazed I'm blown away and excited for the Tiger Cats that they can fix everything in, in four games and we can forget the first 14 yeah me too and you know, it is a it's a it's a it's a tough load to carry that, you know, you've won four games all year, now you have to win now, you know, the scenario we're painting is that to win four straight. But it's yeah. certainly in their hands. And I had I had cra- I had crazy situations in my career where into where we it, the last game of the season there was every option still available and sometimes it just gets so so wild, you know, with a nine team uh league. And you know, if you it, the, the look at the schedule, Calgary is sort of an outlier of a team that's playing that's playing good football, got their playoffs, you know, they're locked into the playoffs. Uh, and who knows, you know, there's a question, of course, as to how things shape up in the East or West, excuse me, as to what the, that game will look like. But Calgary aside, you've got Sask, who's lost four games straight. And of course, back to back with Ottawa, who is a losing team. And so um, it's not not impossible to say that this is four winnable games. Um, but if any, after losing any of them, it becomes very, very difficult uh, uh, to, to even get into the playoffs. Yes, absolutely. And you mentioned Calgary, Luke. They're going to play a big factor in who makes the playoffs, the Riders or the Tiger Cats, because, of course, the Tiger Cats travel to Calgary, still looking for first road win of the season. Tiger Cats need that if they're going to go into the playoffs. And Riders play Calgary twice. So Calgary could really... Mm-hmm help or hurt one of these teams down the stretch and Calgary's still fighting for home field advantage so they're in the playoffs but you know that they don't want to go on the road in in the semifinal mm-hmm. yeah it's it's going to come down a, a lot to that and if you lose to Sask this weekend with the Ticats then you're also relying on Saskatchewan losses in the future too so Sask and Calgary are very interesting you know they're sort of the kingpins in the scenario for for Hamilton and Edmonton and Ottawa. I mean, it's, it's, it, it'll be very interesting. It'll be a fun puzzle to piece together over the coming weeks, but, or I should say it, it could be fun. <laughs> if the Ty Cats win this Friday, <laughs> it could be fun to kind of piece it all together. We'll see. Man, I, if, if you're the Tiger Cats, do you want to rely on a Dickinson brothers matchup to, <laughs> to, to open the door to get into the playoffs? I don't know. Yeah, I don't tough, know. Tough. <laughs> um, Looking at the depth charts, Luke, uh, the biggest change is probably at receiver. I know a position you hold near and dear to your heart. Mm-hmm. So no Stephen Dunbar. He's he's out. Uh, he, he's missed practice due to some personal reasons. Uh, Pappy White is injured. So in comes Anthony Johnson. 
He played earlier this year, just one game, caught both of his passes. He got one for a touchdown, also had a 51-yard gain and, and fumbled, but he's a big receiver, and they've been wanting to get him back in the lineup. And Terry Godwin, I'm interested to see him. I was watching him in practice last couple of days. He's going to wear number 80. He's 25 years old, was just in camp with Tennessee, played a, three games with Jacksonville, went to University of Georgia, 5'11", 185. But my question to you about Terry Godwin, Luke, is Coach O said he's not only fast, he's quick. So c explain that difference for a receiver between fast and quick. Sure. Um, I was certainly not fast as a receiver. <laughs> um, I mean, I, and I, and I don't want to make too much of a joke. It wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't slow either. I mean, I, I had okay speed and my, my, but my fastest 40 ever was a four, five, nine. There are plenty of receivers that could run much faster than that, but I was really quick in and out of breaks, especially. And so, uh, you know, quickness is about acceleration as opposed to top speed. Right. And it's, it's, um, uh, you know, a, a freight train can get going at a high speed, but it takes a long time to get there. Right. And for receivers, especially guys who are catching, who are conversion wide receivers, second down wide receivers, and who are um, catching those passes o uh, over the middle and in the flats, that's about being explosive in and out of breaks. And, you know, coming out of a break is obvious. You want to go from stopping to running in a quickly, but to be explosive into a break is interesting too, to me, because you have to be able to be running fast or have at least the illusion of speed and as your body language and then be able to stop right now and then and then move and then change directions that's the that is the fundamentals of being a wide receiver and so if you have both of those skill sets and some guys do it, it's it, it's amazing speedy b certainly has certainly has that of course he's speedy but also <laughs> you know he was he was really able to to cut and come in and out of breaks so uh, so quickly is what what's what makes him an, an incredible football player and uh i'll be excited to to see what happens with godwin as well and it's unfortunate i actually think in the loss to montreal the ticats last game they're coming out of a bye week uh i i thought stephen dunbar probably played the best of the wide receivers in that core and i think that the wide receiver core struggled in the game um, you know, he wasn't called on to make a lot of big plays, but I thought the times he got the ball in his hand, it, it, it looked great. I, I really liked how he, how he played. Um, and he's obviously been a key to, to on this, in this offense for two years. So I, I'm, it's, it's not a great time in the season to see a guy like that be missing from the lineup, but we'll see you get guys. And I remember coming to Hamilton out of a San Diego charger training camp and, um, so long as you're healthy, you know, I, I remember having a really good feeling, really good energy. You know, I, I had been working hard against, uh, you know, against NFL players for a month and it's with successes and, 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 and losses and all that. And I just felt really confident and ready to, ready to finally play football instead of just practice football. So I don't know. It'd be exciting to see him. The other thing with God, when you mentioned coming out of camp, uh, in the NFL to the CFL, Tiger Cats have him slotted in as wide as a wide receiver. Is that an easier transition in his first CFL game than than at slot back? Uh, yeah, I would say it is. Uh, you just have less of that waggle to 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 think about, and it is. You know, it sounds maybe simple, like why couldn't it just be learned? But it's something you're thinking about, and it's almost almost like early on for for receivers as they're learning that waggle. It's not just about the timing. It's also like you're thinking about the waggle and then the ball snaps and you're, you pick your eyes up and for the first time you're looking at the defense. And, you know, you just kind of forget to, to analyze correctly and go through the process of, you know, hear the play, alignment, assignment, a technique, and execution. And so um, when you're lined up in a stationary on the ball, it's a little bit of a comfort for a guy coming from an NFL camp. Of course, Luke, you had on that, RJ, though, yeah, the, uh, he'll have times during the game where he's moving too. You know, it's not every play kind of thing. So he'll have to do, he'll have to do it as well. Uh, but just yeah. it's not it won't be an every play thing such as like Tim White will mostly have to deal with and those guys. Well, it is exciting when a new player comes in and the coaching staff seems excited about him. So he's getting an opportunity in a very important game. So he could emerge as a as a star. Tim White had that opportunity last year in his rookie year. He got a chance to play, and now he's. 17 yards away from his first 1,000-yard receiving season. You had three of those in your career, Luke, if my calculations are correct. And do correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but I believe you had three. It sounds right. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is, is that the pinnacle for a receiver in, in a season to, to hit that 1,000 yards receiving? 
Yeah, yeah, it's a good checkpoint. If you, it's a, it's a good, um, you know, that's a. You can't, you can't be, you can't be a mediocre receiver and get to a thousand yards. I mean, you, you had a really good year if you did that, and uh, good. Hopefully, we see Tim White do that in the first quarter uh, of this uh, of this game on Friday. Um, you know, I remember one year. Jalen Saunders, Speedy B, and myself all had a thousand yards for the first time in Ticat history. That was a that was a memorable moment, and uh, you know that along with catches and yards after the catch and touchdowns. You know that, but that that is that is certainly the, a stat that is great, and, and he, he certainly deserves it. He's been he's made a, a lot of plays this year. I hope he hope he gets that this Friday. Absolutely, we're going to talk more about some of the the lineup and the depth chart and what we're going to see on Friday. But want to remind you, Ticats fans, it's time to ride on our strength. From now until October 13th, purchase four eligible Hercules passenger or light truck tires to receive a $100 Ticats rewards card and be entered to win our road trip sweepstakes. Available at participating Active Green and Ross Ontario locations or visit HerculesTires.com slash AGR rewards. Luke Lawrence Woods, he is back and he's a difference maker he's missed four games he still leads the cfl in punt return average he has the longest punt return at 88 yards he has the most punt returns of over 30 yards and he's number two in overall yardage in punt returns with 16 fewer touches so he really racked up a, a little buffer there on on everybody else. Him back in the lineup for the Tiger Cats, can he be a difference maker? Absolutely he can. And it has shown that he's been missing from the lineup. I think they got lucky with the timing of their bye weeks and Lawrence Woods being out of the lineup. Uh that added more you know, more recovery time without missing an extra game for him twice. Good point. Yeah. Um it's been noticeable. There I thought that there return teams or the return game earlier this season was outstanding i mean it really they were beating return return game to return game on any opponent they were winning that battle um you know you you obviously it's offense versus defense but one of another way to look at the game is you know one quarterback has to outplay the other quarterback this defense has to outplay the other defense even though they're not on the field together and return game to return game the ticats were winning every time uh, certainly has not have not had a bad special teams unit uh, since then, but it's a huge miss. Uh, it's been a missing link to have Lawrence Woods out of the lineup, and um, you hope that he's healthy and he hits the ground running because they could really use some of those explosive plays again. Um, and boy, if you can if you can get a score on special teams, and, and I mean, it's one of those that's one of those statistical factors that makes it much more likely to win a game. And that would be um, we'll see how much of an impact he has in these in this last stretch. Yeah, for sure. And Saskatchewan has to be aware of of Lawrence Woods and what he can do. Siante Evans is also back. So that secondary for the Tiger Cats is back to the starting secondary. And and Coach O talked about it yesterday, said Siante is a great player. And his presence, just his presence there makes a big difference for the team. As a player, just talk about... Uh, uh, another player's presence. Mm. Why is that important? Sure. I mean, it comes from their attitude and demeanor. You'd think Simone Lawrence is a guy like that, where, you know, you just, there's a little bit of comfort food just seeing uh, him out there. And Santi Evans is a guy like Lawrence Woods. He's missed a number of games this year. He's still right near the top of the league for pass knockdowns, even having, even having not been in the lineup for so many weeks. And so, uh, still first, still first. There you go. And yeah. so you know, I, it's amazing the product, the production that he's been able to have uh, in the games he's been able to play. Um, it gives even you know, as an offensive guy, I remember that same feeling of just knowing that that the guys out there that's supposed to be there. It's not even a, it's not even a statement as to who's played there in the weeks that that he's been out. It's just not about that. It's just uh, just knowing that uh, uh, that this is a guy who whose job it is to make play and he does it well and. Uh, that'll be huge for the secondary uh, as well. Luke, you know I love Wes Hills. He's tough to bring down. He's a hard runner. He's tough to play against. And he just wants to smash guys. He was awesome yesterday in, in his media appearance. If you if you didn't hear it, go to tie catch today for Wednesday. And, and Wes Hills is in there. But he said you can be the hammer, the nail. I like being the hammer, whether I'm blocking guys, carrying the football. I want to run into that defense, and I want them to know that this back is going to hit them. And he feels it'll create space as the game goes on, but you just have to love that attitude. And, and clearly he's feeling good coming into this game because he's ready to, to smash some riders. Yeah, and he, he's looked he's looked great. He's been so fun to watch in these last couple of weeks. And 
uh, especially in the Winnipeg game, I thought his just his presence was just really notable and his impact on the game. Um, so physical, but I also you know when he gets he's he's not as he's not slow either. Like I love watching when he gets yeah. a little space in the open field. Um, I, I I think he's been an asset for the Tie Cats that kind of you know coming in here as the season sort of on the line. Uh, you hope a guy like that's going to step up as well. So Dane Evans, we've seen a, a couple of really good games out of him. He needs to continue that. He hasn't beaten Saskatchewan in his career, which is a little bit surprising. But the other thing, there's a distinct statistic in what's happened to, to Dane this year. He's thrown 13 interceptions. They've all been in losses. In his three victories, he has not thrown an interception. So is... Is that the mark that we evaluate if he <laughs> winds up throwing an interception? Do we say, oh, no, this might not be good. But if uh, he doesn't, maybe we can say, hey, it's, it's going to be a win for sure. It's just a really odd stat that 13 interceptions, all in losses. Yeah. Yeah, that is unique. It's not totally unexpected, you know, in the sense that of the impact of turnovers. And I don't want to... You know that it you gotta you gotta be able to throw an interception as a quarterback and come back the next drive and play and play great again and that's what I would hope to see from Dane but I don't want to put too much pressure on that turnover stat because I want to keep it in in uh, relation to the ratio right I mean it does depend on how many how many times the defense can take the ball away as well and um, and of course and of course there's fumbles in the kicking game as well so to win that ratio for the for the Rough Riders or excuse me for the Tie Cats against the Rough Riders it's a must. I mean, you got to do everything to protect that football and to be aggressive and have Seante Evans turn some of those knockdowns into interceptions in his first game back, you know, but Dane, he's looked different. He's just looked really, really different in the last two games prior to the bye week. Uh, and you, and you just, you just kind of can sense, uh, you know, that he's ready to go out there and have a great uh, game at Tim Hortons field again. You know, we've analyzed this game inside and out. Can't wait for kickoff at 7.30 on Friday to actually see how it all plays out. But there are a lot of similarities between the teams. They both come in one and four in their last five games. Cody Fajardo has never lost to the Tiger Cats. Dane Evans has never beaten the Riders. And turnovers. We've talked about it about the for the Tiger Cats all season. They've had too many and at poor times, and they've been costly. But the Riders are a minus nine in their turnover ratio in the last three games. So mm. if one of these teams can clean things up, that's going to lead to success. But there's so many little storylines in this matchup, not to mention the significance in the playoffs. Absolutely, yeah. And that's that's what's going to take shape, you know, so so quickly here. And as this... As the night goes on, I mean, minus nine in three games is you have a you have a a real flood of bad things happening. I mean, you that is for, for the Rough Riders. That's the conversations that we were all having earlier in this season after games with five turnovers and four turnovers, and as it went and as it went, you know, wrong and more wrong as the early part of the season progressed. And now the Tie Cats have sort of tightened that up, and if they can continue to to aggressively strip the ball away, I mean, we. It's talked about. It's it's coached to bring in the hatchet, to not just bring the guy to the ground, but to take a shot at the football in his arms. Um, if they can really amplify that and force a team that's having an issue with it to keep on having that issue and turning the ball over, uh, you, you're not going to uh, uh, Sask isn't going to be able to come to Hamilton and overcome a turnover ratio. They're not. If if they're going to lose the turnover ratio, they'll lose the game on on the road. mm Hmm. The other key in their first matchup in week one, both teams have changed a lot since week one, but Saskatchewan had eight quarterback sacks. The Hamilton offensive line that has been pretty consistent over the last few games and successful with Riley, Revenberg, Beard, Wood, Manzi, and Kelly. Do you think there's any chance the Riders get close to eight quarterback sacks on Friday? <laughs> that would really, that would really surprise me. This offensive line was, was dealing with a lot of things, including young, including just young players with young lines of communication, you know, or, you know, just a, a, a not experienced group together. Uh, they've played well. They, they've they've done a good job later in this season, and uh, and I, I, they're not they're, they're We won't see eight sacks against against Dane Evans. I I, I don't. I, I wouldn't expect that at all. So quarterback sacks on the other side. Saskatchewan's allowed the most, 
but the Tiger Cats, and maybe it had something to do with Dylan Wynn being out in their last game against Montreal, but they didn't have any quarterback sacks in that game. That was the first time since week one against the Riders that the Tiger Cats didn't have any quarterback sacks. But when you look at how many the Riders have allowed this year, and I asked Mason Bennett it yesterday because he's been on a, a roll getting quarterback sacks. Do you look at the stats? Do you see how many they allow? And he, he was very upfront and said, yeah, we look at the stats. We know. So, so they have to be thinking they can get to Fajardo on Friday. Yeah, and, and the games where they have been able to get to the quarterback, to opposing teams' quarterbacks, it has changed the flow of games. We saw them. We saw them have a bit of success uh, earlier in the season. Uh, they certainly pressured Zach Caleros when, when Winnipeg was in Hamilton, uh, and and it changes it changes the way it goes. And isn't that interesting? I mean, every player is different as to the weight they put on on stats for their position group. And you will find some guys who are like, I don't even know where to find the stats. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, it's just not. You know, this there, it's not something that they think about in their week of prep. And then some guys literally the game ends and and they're on their phone in the locker room they're like oh wow task nice game today man you had 102 yards <laughs> it's like what so every player everybody's uh, different with that but for that group such a tangible uh you know such a tangible stat that that you know careers hang on with you know the number of sacks you can get uh yeah th- those guys those guys are hungry to, to to go get a few so the season is winding down four games left for the tiger cats Two road games, including October 29th, and you could win a trip to the Tiger Cats game in Ottawa on October 29th with Journey Rewards. Simply hit ticats.ca slash journey dash rewards to enter to win two tickets on Via Rail, hotel and game tickets, plus a chance at other prizes, including an autographed Ticats jersey or $250 gift card to the Ticats shop. So go on the road to the Ticats to Ottawa with Journey Rewards. And we'll see how much that game means. It could have a ton of meaning, or it could just be a nice, fun trip for Thai Cats fans because the Thai Cats have already qualified for the postseason. Friday's game will go a long way in figuring out if that October 29th Journey Rewards road trip will be a must win or a fun, relaxing time for Thai Cats fans. What do you think the key will be? on Friday for the Tiger, Cat, Tiger Cats to beat the, the Riders, Luke? You know, you don't want to put it down to uh, one player's position. If, if, the quarterback, if the quarterback play from the Tiger Cats, if Dane Evans um, uh, moves in the wrong direction, if he turns the ball over, um, the Tiger Cats, I, I don't know if they'll be able to, to, to overcome that. Now, in Montreal, you know, Dane, I thought, I thought played a pretty good football game. Uh, and obviously they were not able to get the win there. Like it's going to take more than that, but bad play from the quarterback position at this time in the season, it's just, you're, you're not going to be able to, to win that game. Got to win the turnover ratio and you got to keep this team coughing the ball up um, to steal that away on defense. And I would love to see a handful of, I would love to see a special teams win in the game overall. Average field position um, to give the, to give your offense a couple short fields in the game, cross the center line to start a drive. Uh, to see Lawrence Woods get back in the mix, um, uh, I'll be looking for all of those storylines as we as we go into to, to the game tomorrow. And Tiger Cats have been pretty good out of a bye week. Oh, four and zero, I believe, right? And there uh, <laughs> since the Tiger Cats Audio Network birth. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Another beautiful Build that stat. one up. Leave the 4 0 out. Since the existence of the Thai Cats Audio Network, the Tiger Cats have never lost after a bye week. That's right. <laughs> it, it's a true stat. Yes. But we'll see. We'll see what happens on Friday. I, I can't wait for this game. It seems we, we wrap up Thai Cats this week almost the same way every week, the way this season's gone, Luke. But it is a huge game and can go a long way in allowing the Tiger Cats to qualify for the playoffs in their 15th game has been some ups and downs 10 losses but they can still do it with a big game friday can't wait to see you tim hortons field luke see you there rj looking forward to it 7 30 kickoff for the tiger cats and riders a ton of importance on this game if you can be at tim hortons field please attend get tickets if not listen on the tie cats audio network it's been another busy week for your Hamilton Tiger Cats. Luke Tasker and RJ Broadhead have covered it all, and now we would like to hear from you. Email us anytime at gameday at Subscribe to the Tiger Cats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.